Season's greetings and welcome to the winter special of yesterday's RAM. The weather is cold, the nights are long and dark, but let's cheer ourselves up with some tech tinkering. So gather round the fire for a winter's tech tale. In my RX 470 video, I'd said that going from 8GB to 16GB of system memory would help with the performance issues we saw on some titles. However, some of you suggested that running the games from an SSD would help more. And I was intrigued. Which would bring the greater benefit to our system? What's worth spending your money on? More memory or faster storage? Let's find out, shall we? Let's recap the original system specs. Here is the system when I first benchmarked the RX 474GB. What we're changing is the RAM. Going from a 2x4GB 1600MHz kit to a 2x8GB 1600MHz kit. Doubling the available system memory. Or keeping the original 8GB of system memory and changing the storage disk. And storing our games on this 120GB SSD. I know it's tiny, but it's the only SSD I had available at the time. The small size meant I couldn't benchmark Red Dead Redemption 2, as it wouldn't fit, and keeping 8GB of system memory meant that I couldn't benchmark Forspoken or The Last of Us Part 1, as they require 16GB of system memory. Let's compare the performance of this SSD to the mechanical disk we'd used previously. Using Crystal Disk Mark, I benchmarked both disks and these are the results. Focusing on the read results, the mechanical Western Digital Red had a sequential score of 116 megabytes a second. Its random reads at a queue depth of 32 is 1.19 megabytes a second, and its random reads at a queue depth of 1 is 0.36 megabytes a second. Comparing this to the SSD, we can see that the SSD is over three times faster for sequential reads, 142 times faster for random reads with a queue depth of 32 and 83 times faster for random reads with a queue depth of 1. And this is an even a fast SSD. Now let's see which component gives the biggest boost to performance. Starting with Far Cry 6, and there's not a huge difference between more RAM and faster storage. The average frame rate is within 1.5 FPS of each other, between a sit on my face 69 and 71 frames per second. However, at the 1% low, we see a larger gap, with 16GB of RAM outperforming the SSD by 4 frames per second with 53.9, compared to 49.8 FPS. At the 0.1% low, results are within a margin of error, but the 16GB result is slightly ahead at 32.9 FPS compared to 31.7 FPS. Nothing definitive so far, neither upgrade has an advantage over the other in Far Cry 6. GTA 5 is an older title, but that doesn't mean it doesn't benefit from some improved system specs, and we have a clear winner in this title. The average frame rate is once again within 1.5 FPS, with the SSD scoring 104.95 frames per second, and the 16GB of RAM scoring 106.2 FPS. Too close to call. But things are very different at the 1% and 0.1% lows. At the 1% low, the SSD scores 16.6 FPS, while the 16GB of RAM is over 3 times faster at 56.5 FPS. At the 0.1% low, this grows to a massive 27 times faster, with the SSD scoring 1.75 FPS and the 16GB of RAM scoring 48.7 FPS. In this case, Adding memory drastically improved performance in GTA 5 and gives a much better performance advantage over faster storage. Battlefield 5 is another title where additional memory seems to benefit us more than fast storage. The average frame rate is nearly a frame higher for the SSD, coming in at 71.2 frames per second, while the 16GB of RAM gives us 70.5 FPS close enough to be within a margin of error. At the 1% low, it's the 16GB of RAM that takes the lead with 42 FPS, compared to 39.8 FPS for the SSD. Not a huge amount, you'd probably not even notice. At the 0.1% low, there is a difference. The 16GB scores 16.6 FPS, 
compared to the SSD's 1.6 FPS. You're going to see some stutter if you play Battlefield 5 with only 8GB of RAM, and an SSD won't help in this title. It's another win for extra memory in Battlefield 5, as it provides more of an advantage than fast storage. Rainbow Six Siege is a mixed bag. I'm surprised by the much higher frame rate for the 16GB, as it scores 30 frames per second higher at 199.1 frames per second, compared to 169.7 FPS for the SSD. The 1% low is a tie, with both configurations hitting around 114 FPS, which is very nice, but at the 0.1% low, we see a big advantage to using the SSD, as it scores 97.2 FPS, much better than the 16GB 57.4 FPS. For Rainbow Six Siege, I'd say this one goes to the SSD. While the average frame rate is lower, it provides a more consistent experience. In Warframe, there's no question, it just likes more memory with faster results across the board. For the average frame rate, 16GB delivers 141.7 frames per second for the average frame rate, compared to 121 FPS for the SSD. For the 1% low, the 16GB of RAM gives us a very nice 108.2 FPS, compared to the SSD's 37.5 FPS, just enough to keep things smooth. But at the 0.1% low, the SSD drops to 14.4 FPS, where things are going to get a bit choppy. The 16GB of RAM gives a 0.1% low of 87.5 FPS, a nice result. In Warframe, 16GB benefits you more than running the game from an SSD, as it allows for a much more consistent experience, which is important for online titles. Rocket League doesn't really care if you're running it from an SSD or running it with 16GB of RAM. The average frame rate is within a margin of error, with only 1 FPS between the SSD and the 16GB of RAM config at 286 to 287 FPS. The 1% low is again very close, with the SSD scoring a slightly better 172.1 FPS to the 16GB 168.5 FPS, while the 1% low shows a slight advantage to the 16GB with 56.25 FPS compared to the SSD's 43.35 FPS. Neither config provided an advantage in Rocket League. While the 16GB of RAM provided a better 0.1% low, both were enough for smooth gameplay. Assassin's Creed Valhalla's minimum spec for 1080p is 8GB of RAM, and recommends an SSD, but the results show that 16GB of RAM, at least DDR3, is required. As expected, both manage a respectable average frame rate, with both obtaining around 60 FPS. At the 1% low, 16GB of RAM maintains a more respectable 47.7 FPS, but the SSD drops to an unplayable 4.4 FPS. At the 0.1% low, the 16GB of RAM is still giving smooth gameplay at 34.6 FPS, while the SSD can only manage 2.4 FPS. With my system specs, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is unplayable on 8GB of RAM, and 16GB is required for playable performance. PUBG is certainly much happier running on 16GB of RAM, with the 16GB config scoring 10 FPS higher than the SSD at 104.6 frames per second compared to 95 for the SSD. We see a sharp drop for both at the 1% low, with the 16GB dropping to 41.1 FPS, and the SSD dropping even further to 18.3 FPS. At the 0.1% low, it's bad for the 16GB at 12.9 FPS, but even worse for the SSD at just 0.5 FPS. PUBG is a demanding title, and while we have a nice average frame rate from both configs, it seems that the system overall is really not up to it. Out of the two though, 
16GB of RAM provides the slightly better experience. In Cyberpunk 2077, both configs do well. The average frame rates are around 50 frames per second. Pal for the win, but there is a clear winner when we look at the 1% and 0.1% lows. At the 1% low, it's still close, but the 16GB of RAM is 5 FPS faster at 37.7, compared to 32.4 FPS for the SSD. This increases at the 0.1% low, with 16GB now nearly 8 FPS faster at 27.6 FPS, compared to 19.7 FPS for the SSD. While 16GB of RAM is the way to go in Cyberpunk 2077, I was impressed by how well 8GB of DDR3 memory performed in this demanding title. In The Witcher 3, we have a win for the SSD where it's faster across the board, scoring an average frame rate of 61.9 frames per second, compared to 61.4 FPS for the 16GB of RAM, but that's within a margin of error. At the 1% low, the SSD delivers 52.1 FPS compared to the 16GB 48.4 FPS, but the real difference comes at the 0.1% low, where faster storage is clearly required, as the SSD scores 36.7 FPS compared to just 7.8 FPS for the 16GB of RAM. As The Witcher 3 is running the next-gen patch, I wonder if it's been tweaked to take advantage of the much faster storage in the current consoles. The SSD I'm using in this test is much, much slower than that of the consoles, but it's still faster than a mechanical drive, and in The Witcher 3, this seems to be important. Does Fortnite run well on other systems? As it certainly doesn't on either of these configs. While we do have a lovely high average frame rate of 189.1 frames per second, on the SSD compared to 151.6 FPS for the 16GB of RAM, we get a severe drop at the 1% low, with the SSD delivering 42.55 FPS compared to 27.7 FPS for the 16GB, and at the 0.1% low, the 16GB gives 10.4 FPS, while the SSD is a little bit lower at 8.5 FPS. I think I have to call this in the SSD's favour, as it's delivering a much higher average frame rate and better 1% low. And while 16 gigs delivered a slightly better 0.1% low, it was only 2 FPS faster. Warzone seems to like fast storage, I imagine for streaming in all those assets as you travel around the map. And our SSD outperforms 16 gigabytes of memory across the board. The SSD delivered an average frame rate of 64.1 frames per second, compared to 56.2 for 16GB. At the 1% low, the SSD was 10fps faster at 35.1fps, compared to 24.8fps. And at the 0.1% low, the results converge with both configurations delivering around 20fps. If you're a fan of Warzone, you're going to want to put it on the fastest storage you have. Apex Legends shows a preference for more system memory rather than faster storage, with 16GB of RAM outperforming the SSD in all measures. For the average frame rate, the 16GB delivered an average frame rate of 116 frames per second, compared to 110 FPS for the SSD. At the 1% low, 16GB of RAM gave us 78.6fps, compared to the SSD's 70.8fps. And at the 0.1% low, 16GB scores 49.4fps, compared to 45.9fps for the SSD. While the 16GB of RAM did give us a better result, it's close and you can have an enjoyable experience in Apex Legends on 8 or 16 gigabytes of system memory with or without an SSD. It's a mixed bag in Halo Infinite, with neither config really having the advantage. For the average frame rate, the SSD delivers a slightly higher 39.3 frames per second 
compared to 38.4 FPS for the 16 gigabytes of RAM. At the 1% low, it seems 16 gigabytes does help, as it scores higher with 28.7 FPS compared to 22.2 FPS for the SSD. While at the 0.1% low, the SSD does slightly better with 10.1 FPS compared to 8.7 FPS for 16 gigabytes. If I had to make a call, it would be for 16 gigabytes of RAM as it delivers a better 1% low closer to 30 FPS, even though it has a worse average frame rate and 0.1% low. The difference in these was small enough that you wouldn't notice. There's a clear winner in our final title, God of War and its faster storage. The SSD delivers an average frame rate of 71.4 frames per second, compared to 56.3 FPS for 16 gigabytes of RAM. At the 1% low, the SSD is nearly 15 FPS faster than the 16 gigabytes of RAM at 44.7 FPS, compared to 30.4 FPS. And at the 0.1% low, the SSD delivers 33.4 FPS, which is more than twice as fast as the 16 gigabytes of RAM at 16.9 FPS. If you're a fan of God of War on the PC, then you might want to consider running it from an SSD. In our comparison, 16 gigabytes of system memory gave improved performance in nine of our tested titles while an SSD gave improved performance in five titles. The rest didn't show a distinct advantage for either config. Looking on eBay, a 16GB kit of 2x8GB modules costs around 25 to 45 Great British Pounds, depending on the specifications. And for the same price, you can get a 1TB solid-state drive, either a 2.5 SATA disk or the much faster NVMe drive if you've got an NVMe slot available. If you can only pick one, I would prioritise the 16GB of system memory, as it will benefit you more in a wider variety of games. In the 2012 system I'm planning to build, I'll make sure to include 16GB of system memory, and I'll expand the system memory on the Fujitsu in the future. But if you don't have to choose, is it too much to ask for both? Next year, I'll be making a video about supercharging your storage, including how to add NVMe drives to systems that don't have an NVMe slot. I've spent the last few months purchasing SSDs of all types, and will be able to fully replace my mechanical drives for benchmarking. Also, videos coming soon, well, I say soon, probably in a few months or so, our emulation on Linux and a final bonus Olin GPU video. I'd like to thank all my subscribers and viewers, especially those of you who leave comments, as I often get ideas for new videos from these. Have a great winter, Rammers, and I'll see you all again next year. Where's this year gone? It's behind you.